Hi, everyone. I'm Matt Clark, research analyst for Money and Markets here with your weekly marijuana market update. Now, today I'm going to talk about the rise and subsequent fall of a newly listed cannabis company that's based right here in Florida. But first, remember, if you do have a question about a cannabis stock or the broader market or really anything related to the market in general uh, that you'd like Adam or Charles or myself to answer in any of our upcoming videos, you can email us. The email address is feedback at moneyandmarkets.com. We'll put that right down below. Uh, and if we use your question in an upcoming video in any of our videos, Videos. We're going to send you some very cool money and markets gear. We've got some hats, some t-shirts, some sweatshirts, all sorts of great stuff we'll send your way. And also make sure you do subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, and get notified each and every time we post up a new video. We've got tons of videos. We do stuff almost every day. Uh, so uh, make sure you uh, are locked in on our YouTube channel. I do encourage you to also check out moneyandmarkets.com. On our website, you can search our proprietary stock power rating system and get the ratings of thousands of stocks. You'll see the breakdown of fundamental and technical ratings, which make up the overall rating. Uh, just go to moneymarkets.com and in the top right hand corner of the homepage, just type in a ticker or company name and you can in, the, in that search bar and you'll be able to see the ranking, the stock chart, fundamental data, and any analysis we publish. And it's all right there at your fingertips. You can build your own watch list, track stock performance, and you can do all of that. Everything I just mentioned for free. Now on with today's update. The medical cannabis market in the U.S. has been booming for several years now, and the legality of medical cannabis has spread to most of the country. And as this map shows, I'm showing you right now. Medical cannabis is legal in 36 states as well as the District of Columbia. Now, the states that are marked yellow on this map indicate where CBD oil uh, is legal, and this is a CBD oil that uses THC as an ingredient uh, in, in, its, in, in that is legal, uh, but not full on medical cannabis. And the states that are red uh, are where medical cannabis is not legal in any form at all. And medical cannabis sales uh, continue to grow and will continue to do so in coming years. A 2021 study by Brightfield Group uh, found that U.S. medical cannabis market was valued at around $7.8 billion in 2020. By 2025, that value is going to jump 45% to $11.3 billion. Now, one company uh, hopes to catch lightning in a bottle by working with the U.S. Drug Enforcement Agency, or the DEA, to provide medical cannabis to companies for product development and research. Basically, this company wants to work to provide DEA-registered companies uh, with cannabis that they can use to make different products, to do testing, uh, to do further research, and, and it also hopes to sell cannabis to fe for federally sanctioned medical research. And, and that company hit a major U.S. exchange uh, in May. Bright Green Corporation, it trades on the NASDAQ, and its ticker symbol is BGXX. It's a Florida-based cannabis company. In fact, it's, it's based right down the road in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, became the first company that actually touches marijuana plants to trade on a US major U.S. stock exchange. The company went public via direct listing rather than the traditional IPO or initial public offering. Now, with a direct listing, uh, Bright Green didn't have to issue any new shares. They basically just sold existing private shares, which mostly were owned by management. Uh, it's a cheaper way to go public as Bright Green also didn't have to hire any investment banks to underwrite or promote the offering. Now, the company is also working on a $300 million growing facility located in Grants, New Mexico. This is located outside of Albuquerque. Uh, on June 28th, the company provided an update on the project, uh, stating that it was on track to complete the 22-acre initial part of the facility in August, and it would uh, incur a DEA inspection after that. Now, once that 22 acres is complete, Bright Green officials have said the next phase will include two, two 57-acre greenhouses used for cannabis research, cultivation, and manufacture. Construction on those facilities is expected to start sometime next year. Now, initially, investors really embraced this stock when it hit the trading floor on May 17th. The day after it started trading, BGXX soared 92.3% to reach a high of about $48 per share by the close of business on that day. Now, it had reached as high as $60 in intraday trading, but it closed out at $48 a share, which is still a 92.3% jump uh, from its IPO, from its initial price uh, of around $25. Uh, the excitement was short-lived, though. Uh, the, the stock fell quickly back to earth, uh, and as of July 11th, uh, the stock was priced at $2.22 a share as of closing on July 11th. That's a 95% fall from that May 2022 high. Now, while the prospect of working with DEA registered companies was exciting to early investors, uh, really all you had to do was look at the company's prospectus highlights to see the big risks with this company. And that was something that really uh, doesn't seem to have been done uh, initially. First off, the company has absolutely no operational history or really, really any real history to speak of at all. 
uh, because of this lack of history, uh, the fact that it's operating in a federally illegal space, because cannabis is not legal federally, uh, the company ha- did admit in its prospectus uh, that it can't find competitive or even economically viable insurance for its operations. Now, speaking of operations, the company reported operational cash flow of negative $1.7 million in 2021. That's on top of operating negative cash flow of 513000 in 2020. So now you're looking at two years worth of operating cash flow that's over a negative $2 million. That's huge. This uh, leaves the company in a position to where it's going to have to use its cash reserves, if there are any, to or, or erase its debt uh, to cover the cost of its loss of operational cash. Now, while Bright Green does have a memorandum of understanding with the DEA, basically this is just an agreement saying we will do this if you meet this, the agency is not officially granted a permit to the company to manufacture cannabis of any kind. So basically the company has no real history, uh, it isn't making any money, and the basis of its operation, uh, which is what investors got excited about, which is basically to provide cannabis to DEA registered companies, kind of giving it that federal legalization feel isn't even official yet. It all adds up to Bright Green being a highly speculative business at this point. Uh, And and by going public uh, via direct listing, investors had to perform their own due diligence before investing in the stock. Because if you go use an IPO, usually the banks that underwrite are doing due diligence for potential investors because they're trying to attract those investors to buy in. With With a direct listing, however, none of that due diligence was done, leaving investors to kind of look for themselves. And all you really had to do was look at their SEC filings to see all this information. And there are many more risks that this company laid out in its prospectus. Those are just a few highlighted. I believe there was about five pages of risks that this company listed on its prospectus. So really, that is a huge red flag. And and like I said, noting that the company hasn't made any money, doesn't have any history, and hasn't even officially been approved by the DEA to to do any type of, of manufacture of cannabis, all these are major red flags and something that initial investors probably should have picked up on initially before buying in uh, on its uh, on its uh, on its direct listing. But the lesson overall here is to really do your homework, ask questions, uh, find people who will, will get answers to those questions for you uh, and before you decide you want to invest in something that is highly speculative uh, like Bright Green. Does this mean Bright Green is, is a bad company? No. It doesn't mean that at all. It just means that uh, you know there's a lot of uh, there's a huge whiff of excitement here, and it all wound up being for naught. And now the company's stock price is paying for it, and ultimately its bottom line is probably going to pay for it as well. So you just have to do your homework. Eventually, if things turn around in terms of legalization and and, and whatnot, this could turn out to be a, a really good deal. However, I think we're a ways off from that. So uh, going public now and investing in a company now is probably not the right time uh, to to do that. So that's all for me this week. If you do have a question about a cannabis stock or maybe the broader cannabis market, email me at feedback at moneymarkets.com. That's feedback at moneymarkets.com. We'll put that right down below. You can also comment here on our YouTube page. We, uh, I enjoy looking at those comments and trying to respond to uh, as many as I can. Don't always get time, but I certainly try to. Uh, but if you do uh, send us a question and we use it in any of our videos, not just the marijuana market update, but in any of our videos, then we're going to hook you up with some very cool money and markets gear. We've got t-shirts, we've got hats, sweatshirts. The boss is working on some other things as well. So we're going to get that all, all loaded to you and sent your way for uh, for taking part in, uh, in, in these videos. Now, don't forget about all the great content we do have on our YouTube channel. It is the best investment in sight and we want to give it to you for free all right here. Follow me on Twitter. Uh, I give you even more insights, not just into cannabis, but into the broader market as well as sports because I am a huge sports junkie. Uh, and you can find me on Twitter at invest with Matt C. That's invest with Matt C. If you follow me, I certainly try to follow you back. Thank you to everyone who watches our videos each and every week. Adam, Charles, myself, our entire team, we do it because we want to give you the best possible investment advice we can to help bolster profits in your portfolio in any market. We want to be adaptive uh, to bull markets, bear markets, whatever. We want to try to find profit opportunity and share that with you right here on YouTube. Check out moneymarkets.com every day for new content that provides safe, sound, smart, simple, profitable investment information for your portfolio. I'm Matt Clark, research analyst for Money Markets and your host of the Marijuana Market Update. Until next time, everyone, safe trading.